So, Arsene Wenger said he's had enough of a rest, five months out, and he's ready to start work once again on the 1st of January, he feels is about the right time for him. First of all, Steve, what do you make of that announcement and what do you think the impact will be in the world of football at all sorts of level? Club, <coughs> national associations, technical director opportunities. What is this that is available? Well, he's, he's mentioned a definite date and I think, uh, obviously, you know, he's been looked at and, and, and had offers, as he said, all over the world. Now, you know... It just depends on what, what he really wants. I mean, for me, I think he would just love to be back in, you know, football on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, we, we kind of thought about would it be, you know, an international manager or sporting director and stuff like that. I think he's still got that love for the game where he needs that kind of day-to-day -day, uh, basis, you know, being with the players all the time. I think um, managers at big clubs, no matter where you are, I think they could be a little bit worried, especially around that time, and especially if um, you know results aren't going that well. But um, I'm pleased that he's actually back in. You know, I do like him, and you know, we can't lose somebody of his vast experience in football. And I think to have him back is fantastic. Matt, having had direct experience of playing under him, do you echo what Steve says? You can't see him either in a, a technical role or perhaps a, a national association role where he hasn't that daily involvement with the players. Just having you know, played for him, I can't. I, I think it's going to be hard for him to look at another manager, pick the team, do the training, make decisions that you know he's done for the last however many years, 20, 30 years. Um, being the person that he is and, and the way he likes to be, you know, in control of all the different facets of the, of the, of the team and the club and what's supporting it. I think a, a technical director role for him would be a real challenge. I really do. I think it would be more challenging than, than taking a coaching role because mm. he's so in tune with what that is and he knows what it, what, what it feels like. It knows what his philosophy is, what he wants from people. The technical one, I think, is a difficult balance because you, you have to have an element where you step back and you allow somebody to put it all together and, and put it on the, t on the pitch. And that's, that, that was his star quality. That's what he's done. So for him not to do that, I think, I think it's a big challenge for himself. Craig, when you look at these actual quotes, though, from Arsene Wenger, does, does it look to you as though he's angling for a job as a club manager? Here, he says, I believe that I will start again on January 1st. I don't know where yet. I feel rested. I'm ready to work again. <laughs> there are associations, national teams. It could also be Japan. That, they don't smack of somebody who's looking for a club job. Or do you think he's well, released he, this statement because he's looking to flush a few out? Uh, I, look, I, I, I don't believe a manager of his quality will need to do that. Mm. Um, so many people will be aware of his qualities. Um, and I'm sure, like the PSG when I was, I, I could always see that happening. I always thought, like I said before, his relationship um, with Nasser and Qatar and um, a, lot of the, a lot of the people there, I always thought he was, if that was built, he was always going to end up going there. Um, that doesn't look like it's going to be the case. National team-wise, like I've said before, I always felt it was, with the next World Cup being in Qatar, um, always conscious of his relationship. I could always just see that happening. But that just, takes him away from a day-to-day -day role. I... Well, look, I, I never... Look, I always, from the outside looking in, with his age um, and all his years of being day-to-day, -day, I always felt that, you know, it's a great... It'd be a great time for him now to take an international job. But by his interview there, it doesn't seem like... That might be the case, or it might not. But I just mentioned Japan because we all know his experience in Japan, and it changed his ideas quite a lot as well. Um, I don't know. It's, it does just it's thrown me off quite a bit, to be honest, Jeff, because I, I don't know where he's looking or what he wants to look. I, can I see him going into the Premier League? I can't. Once you've been at Arsenal for so many years, I don't see him managing another team against Arsenal. Well, there you go. What sort of job, what sort of level would Arsene Wenger be offered in the Premier League? I think if he was to be offered a job in the Premier League, he'll probably be as a director, or you know, obviously above, above the manager. To, to, to you know, to would he would he be offered a manager if he makes it known that he wants a manager's job? Would he be offered a top club in this country? I wouldn't have thought so. I mean, I can't see where he would where he would get in. I mean, look, can you see anything going wrong at the moment? At the moment with Chelsea, no. Uh, but then again, we know how quickly things can change there. Um, Liverpool, no. 
Um, and I think he would. I think he would find it difficult going into to one of them to one of them clubs. And but I can't say the the board of directors and owners of, of the big clubs in the Premier League, maybe his Turner team, they would like to turn to him as an advisory role. I don't think the managers would like it either because they'd feel as though that's a bit of a threat. Um, but that depends on the manager. Um, so for me, I think you know, looking at Premier League clubs, I would probably say no. Uh, but of course, the, you know, the rest of Europe. And of course, all around the world, as he's just said, you know, he's been offered all around the world. I think it would be, um, I think he would enjoy that more. Whether he actually wants to be back in the Premier League is another thing. But I, mean, I, think I can't see him getting I one. I think that's though. a good point because what, wanting to go and manage a, a big club in the Premier League after you've had, you know, one of the strongest affiliations to one club, I, I just can't see him, him wanting that. I can't see him wanting that. With what he, he gave to Arsenal over he, that period he, of time. He, he, he may feel that. Um, his time at Arsenal was ended prematurely. He, he didn't seem to be overly pleased about what had happened. It was, there was a respectful sort of silence from both sides yeah. and it was handled in a very civilised manner. But he, he, he may be even more fired up than ever. I mean, let me read you this tweet which you sent in. It says, um, I hope he comes back to the Premier League. Manchester United, hopefully. Mm. Could you see him as manager of Manchester United? Well, it's the obvious club at the moment that is is not it, it has a you know managerial pressure. So of course p people are going to look for clubs of that stature and say, well, hold on a minute, Manchester United is not very secure at the moment uh, with uh, Jose Mourinho there. Perhaps that's an option. I personally, I just find it'd be, it'd be the strangest thing mm. to see him manage at Manchester United. Now, whether or not he would personally be up for that challenge, you know, that's a question for him to answer. But it'd be very strange because of the way his success tapered towards the end, Craig, mm. would he still be offered jobs of the stature of Real Madrid? Bayern Munich are struggling right now. Will he be offered those jobs, do you think? Um, just by the way... Look, Bayern Munich, are, they have to win the league. And they have to have a good opportunity. You know, They have to be there or thereabouts in the Champions League. Real Madrid, both. They expect both. Why would you then go for the manager? Of course, listen, he, he, he changed that game. We all have the highest respect of him, but would you go for a manager then who didn't win the Premier League in such a long period? Like Manchester United, say, for instance, have to win the Premier League. They have to. That's why they brought in Mourinho. Now, it doesn't look like that's going to be achieved in this year, certainly, even in the next couple of years. So would you then go a manager then who really spent a long time at Arsenal, especially at the end of his career, nowhere near and actually got further away. Mm. So I, I believe his opportunities of going to those type of clubs, which they all would have had him at one stage, um, are no longer there. But at the same time, um, does he have a lot to offer a lot of teams out there? Of course he does. I just don't want to see him go to any other team in the Premier League because of his uh, association, what he had with Arsenal. It just wouldn't look right. But we, listen, we know football, there's, it, anything can happen. I just, like I said, I, it's a life, for me, it's what he should be looking at now is a lifestyle choice. What do I want to do now for the, you know, for but the this, this, of my This is a part. guy, as, as Matt will tell you, he is obsessed. Yeah. And I, I don't mean that in any derogatory fashion. He is obsessed with football. Morning, noon, he said he's sacrificed virtually his life his, for his, football. His, his lifestyle choice would be how much can I get a football put back into my life. That's how I see it. I, th I think that for a, li a lifestyle choice for other people might be, you know, like, like you mentioned, an international job would suit at this stage of your career, what have you. I think he's the opposite to that. No, I, I, I agree with he, that he, as well. He comes across as a manager more. that handling a club day to day keeps him alive. Mm -hmm. You know, it keeps him kind of on his toes. And I th I'm not saying that it, it doesn't if he goes into the kind of, you know, international. But I think he needs a job which he has to work every day because that actually fuels him. That's, that's what kind of he would love to get up for every single morning rather than, look, I'm not seeing an international manager. It's, it's a brutally hard job. But for me, I think Arsene Wenger loves the day-to-day -day thing. Mm. Here's one for you then. The FA have just lost Dan Ashworth to Brighton Hove Albion. Should they move heaven and earth to get Arsene Wenger to work in tandem with Gareth Southgate and help oversee the national game? I mean, what, it would be a huge positive for the FA in English football. To see him in that role, for me, with his experience of English football, his knowledge of what's important and, and, and what, what the, the makeup of, of an England player is, 
you couldn't pick anyone better to, to, to fill a role if it became Bacon. I think it, it would be great in there, but I just, I don't think that would satisfy him. I really don't think there's enough, you know, maybe time on the grass or setting up a team, those day-to-day -day changing room moments that, that, that draw him into football. It doesn't offer that. So, you know, it'd be great to, to have him there, but I, I just don't think that, that would interest him, maybe. Here's another uh, tweet we had in as well. Would you turn to Wenger for a long-term haul to develop young players like he has done or for a short-term fix to get a quick turnaround, taking his age into consideration? Yeah, but what type of short-term fix? Well, it's not going to be a relegation struggle, is it? But perhaps, well, you could say a, a Bayern Munich. But Monaco. Well, that, that was the Monaco one, actually. Even today, obviously, with Thierry Henry, we all knew he was going there yesterday, but... Um, I'm sure he must have been approached for that because he's managed Monaco. So surely they would have, you know, he's, the, he's been there before, so you feel like you've got a line to be able to speak to him. Would you like to come back? We'd love to have you back here. Um, and I'm, I'm look, I, I could be wrong, I'm, but he probably didn't want to do that one. So to me, is where's he going to go now? Where's he, is he going to go to Italy? I can't see that. I know we talk about the Bayern Munich one, but... Maybe his that, that gonna... actually sounded him out, as Craig said, and he's, he's maybe turned around and sort of said, look, that one's probably not for me, but I think a great one you should go for is Henri. Mm -hmm. And he, he might have sort of said, go down that road. Um, as Craig said, I, I think there's a very, very good chance, if not you know, definite, that they did, ha they did have a conversation. But, you know, obviously, he's, I would have thought, he's, well, he obviously has turned around and just sort of said, look, this, this one's not for me. I want to do maybe something else. What that is, would be interesting Why to see. Why mention Japan? That was the one that threw me off. That was... What? Well, he, he, he has great affection from his time at yeah. Grand Posay. He speaks Absolutely. really highly of it. Yeah, he, 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 likes, he likes the culture, he likes yeah. the food. And... It's interesting to name that place in that statement, though, isn't it? You know, it's, it's quite a... quite an important thing to actually say, maybe, maybe Japan. That was the bit that threw me off. That's yeah. why even... As soon as he mentioned Japan, then I thought, well, is a national team. Yeah. Um, but then, if it's day-to-day, -day, is he going to go back over there? Because, like I said, we, we all know his affection for Japan as well. OK, well, we know he has a huge amount to offer the game with all his experience. It's quite interesting to uh, see some of the other quotes from the same interview. He said, uh, football players played for their clubs 20 years ago and they felt guilty if they had a bad game. Now, the club does. And the balance of power has completely changed. Is he right? To a degree, yeah. I, th I think I think those those statements. Do you know what? It, it's what, why it's hard to back that up because it's it's a very hard thing to measure, isn't it? You know how someone's feeling. You know, um, and all you can do is go is go on what you're seeing, body language, um, appearance on the pitch, how you carry yourself in, in those moments, and you know the, the game's completely changed, hasn't it? In, in 20 years, from when, when you entered the game, when, when you played in the game, it's, it's, completely, it's completely different and the requirements are very different. So, is, is it, has responsibility shifted away from players? I believe it has. I believe it has. And even my time coming in, I, was, I think at our period we got to see that. And I think m moving clubs, um, I got to understand that as well because it was all player liaison officers and everything was just geared, just concentrate on football, everything's all sorted out for you. And I'm completely the opposite way. Like, and I'm a product of this, by the way. This is talking about my own bills or anything like that. I don't do anything myself. But I also blame football for that. As yeah. much as everything was taking care of me so much. But, I'm sorry, Matt, but I'm the complete opposite with my young players. No one's here to look after you. You look after yourselves. So they have certain disciplines, certain levels, and even do their own kit, you name it, because the first thing I tell them is, no one's here to look after you. You're here to look after yourself. And you're, no matter what you go and do in life, you look after yourself. Don't mm. rely on anyone for anything else. And that's, we take care of the football bits, but the responsibility is, off the pitch is your responsibility. And I think clubs have taken it so upon themselves, I don't know whether, because we had so many foreign players coming in that didn't quite, you know, with even little things like bills, driving licence, all that type, they were taken care of. Phone bills. Take players, care of players have changed purely and simply, as, from my point of view, is because, and, and it's not, you wouldn't sort of necessarily say it's the players' fault,
but there's an awful lot of money now in football, an awful lot more than what there was. And young, young players that haven't really made a mark in any first team, um, you know, and this is not just Premier League, but around, uh, around the country with, uh, with in, in, you know, all the leagues. You've got kids now earning vast amount of money and they haven't really done anything. Now, that changes players because then, therefore, where does their desire to actually want to be better, want to get in the first team, they don't have to. You know, there's, but, 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 you hear stories of lads even, buying all kinds, it's and it's not ridiculous. even first team level. We're talking like kids. Academy. Like but they're getting offered. 14. No, they're but getting, getting offered silly money. They're getting taxis, picking them up from the house yeah, and taking them a train. But, no, but, that is not. Get on the bus. Get a train. Well, find this route. Don't, find that route. That shouldn't take you no know, I mean, I, I don't like going back like kind of or when I played and all this kind of thing. But as an apprentice, you're expected to you know do the stands, paint the uh, do the stands, uh, paint the training ground, sort the kit out, clean pros' boots. That's not on the description no. anymore. And I feel as though that is character building for do you, players. Do you, do you think, two things here, just bring it back round to Arsene. Do you think he has highlighted that, and that perhaps he not can't cope, but he's unsure of his ability in handling the modern player like that now? I'm, in that I'm, the I'm, players take less responsibility. If you look at his yeah. great teams, you hear from, you know, and you've spent time with Thierry Henry, a lot of them said, yes, he was a great manager, but there was a problem we sorted it out ourselves he, i think he i think he's highlighting it for the other reason perhaps he's looking at it thinking well i actually want now want to focus the next however many years of my career on on changing that i think that'd be something great what a great thing to focus on to be, be able to create an environment in the modern game where players could take responsibility for themselves and be able to do the things that you mentioned there and and, and the, the kind of jobs and responsibility you got handed how do, you, how do you create that in the modern game? Some, someone like him could take a stance on something like that. You know, it'd be a great thing for him to, to look into. Right, well, speaking of the modern era, I think you're going to like this one. Um, he also went on to say, the balance of powers, we said, has changed. Neymar has 170 million followers on social media. He's got more power than the league itself. He says, I'm convinced within five years that it, it may well happen that social media will make substitutions during the game. <laughs> and now he's been stop laughing. I don't, I don't think it'll go that far. I have to be brutally honest. I mean, look, I, I, I I'm not a I mean, look. I, I, I class myself as a bit as a dinosaur, really. I'm not really into the. I'm on Twitter, but I've only more or less just gone on Twitter. But if I'm, the Facebook and Snapchat and all these other things that they, they do, like you could name them. I would, I wouldn't know how to how to do that. Um, but. You know, it is, it is the way the game's going. Not what he said, I don't think that, but I just think sometimes, you know, a, a lot of players have got a lot of following, uh, followers and they'll put stuff on and I just think, you know, why not just stick to your, why not just stick to your football? You've got a lot of time when you're retired to mess about with your Facebooks and your, your, your Twitters and stuff like that. Not just quite now, but I wouldn't go as far as what Arsene Wenger said about, you know, making the substitutions. But because that, that pressure's always been there, hasn't it? You know, it's, it's, it's either been there from live in the stadium, from what the written press have said about, you know, managers have made decisions before under pressure from, from supporters, demands or, or from the media. That, you know, that's always been there. It's just that now it's just so easy to sit on a phone and, and put an opinion out there. But, I, 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 yeah, yeah, sure, this, you know, the, the, way, the way the world's going in that sense for me is, is difficult to understand, but I don't think it's going to have that kind of impact on people. You're an aspiring coach, mm -hmm. manager. So five years down the line, you're in the dressing room at half-time, the chief exec comes in and says, Craig, look, they want him on. Yeah. <laughs> We're under pressure here. Yeah. Get out. Quick. <laughs> yes. it, wouldn't, um, yeah, the, it wouldn't be probably the best decision for him to do that. But at the same time, look, it, look I, you've got to be conscious. I understand why a lot of players do it, um, especially with their boot, de boot deals, their sponsor, you know, there's so much sponsorships coming. You've got 170 odd million people following you. There's a lot of money to be made off the back of that. Um, and I'm not saying um, Neymar, for one instance, is sat on his phone replying to 170 odd million. No, there's other companies that do it for him. Um, but at the same time, it's the, it's the world we live in. Listen, even to be on TV right now, when you know other company broadcasters out there, if you've got a couple of million follow followers on Twitter, then they want you on their networks because they believe that's going to come. It's, it's part of society, it's part of what we're living. Um, I believe there's a certain period for that, there's a certain time if you're a grown man, I can't tell you how to live your life. Possible for me to do so. But if it brings the club or anyone else where consequences then is 
there has to be consequences for the back of it. Boys under 18, mm -hmm. I don't believe you should be on Twitter. I don't believe you should be on any social network. Do not want to see it. It is completely banned. If I find out you're on it, then it's trouble again. So there's a certain period, because I can do that because they're my, under my age group, so they have to listen to what I say, unfortunately for them. But when they get to a certain age, not a problem. None of my business, but long as I don't... As long as it doesn't cause me any concerns or anyone else or the team or the club, um, and it's done in a respectful manner, I have to go along with society, even though I'm not involved in it. I don't like... So are you anything. on social media? No, you know I'm not. You know full well I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I like my life as it is. <laughs> <laughs>